Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean Olale. Today we're coming to you from, I've said this before, one of my favorite places. <laughs> it's the Oklahoma History Center. We're specifically in a new exhibit called Crossroads of Commerce. We love coming here, and we are so excited about this new exhibit. It tells the story of economic development in Oklahoma. And listen, this isn't some kind of dry exhibit you're not going to have any fun at. There are all kinds of fun and interesting things to see here, going through five time periods dating all the way back to 1716. Focusing on our state's pioneers of commerce and economic development, you'll see the early days of Oklahoma companies like Love's Country Stores and the old TG&Ys, remember those? So many Oklahoma men and women who had ideas that turned into economic realities. We'll have more on this exhibit a little bit later in our show. But first, let's talk about a place in our state that's really going to benefit if your family plans a trip there later this year. The folks at Beavers Bend State Park are working really hard to clean up after the latest round of flooding, but our Darren Brown tells us you don't want to let the weather ever stop you from planning a trip at some point later this year when they get things cleaned up to one of the most beautiful parts of our state. It's just my kind of terrain, my kind of country that I like living in, the hills, the timber, and it's just the environment I like, the water, the clear water, the lakes, and it's, it's, it's you know, what I like living in. Jim Miller is not just one of the area's most satisfied residents, he's the park manager. Jim's been at Beaver's Bend for over 30 years. He says he doesn't have to sell folks on the place as much as he just tells them. We have a 40-room lodge on the lake. You, you know, up on Stevens Gap on the lake, we have 48 cabins down in Beaver's Bend. At both places, we have RV campgrounds with electricity and water. Take your pick if you want to camp on the lake or if you want to camp on the river. And in both locations, we also have primitive campsites where you tent camp. So there's a variety of ways you can stay with us, depending on you know, just how you like to camp. Built by the Civilian Conservation Corps back in 1936, Beaver's Bend State Park is truly a getaway spot. Your smartphone will work fine out here, but the stresses and headaches that go along with it, well, they might just disappear. A lot of people come here to the park to, to just get away from the bigger cities, Dallas, uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa. Um, a lot, do a lot of good camping, fishing, hiking. It's kind of enjoyable to see somebody for the first time, see deer and actually take photos of them. They're not used to deer just being right there where you can actually just look at them and take photos. It is just a top-notch, um, just beautiful, beautiful area. Joel and Mary Osborne both love the outdoors, but this is their first trip to Beaver's Bend. Actually, it's their first camping trip. It was probably one of the prime, prime areas, and like I say, this is our first time camping, so to be so lucky and have, you know, decided to come to this area is gorgeous. If you've lived in Oklahoma for any amount of time, you know that the summers can be brutal. But times like this, when the air is a little crisper, the leaves are a little more colorful, it's the perfect time of year to be at Beaver's Bend State Park. Times like this, you don't want to stay indoors. Well, the trails are in really good shape. You'll see the fall colors. Um, you may see wildlife, deer, turkey, squirrels, raccoons, and you, know, you may see those animals out there. It's just amazing how many people from Texas and uh, you know, other parts of the country come here and say that this is just absolutely one of the prettiest places that they've camped. I couldn't have said that any better myself. In Beaver's Bend State Park, Discovering Oklahoma, I'm Darren Brown. We're proud to share with you all our new resources for reading about our great state parks and all kinds of places to get outdoors in Oklahoma. You can head to TravelOK.com to request your free copy of the 2016 Travel Guide. Just click up on where it says Request Free Brochures. There is so much history to see and experience at this new Crossroads to Commerce exhibit here at the Oklahoma History Center. And I think they said this exhibit covers close to 10,000 square feet. It's all interactive. It's so much fun. There is a lot to see here. And there is all kinds of old-fashioned antiquing at our next stop. This is what my grandma used to call junkin'. Mm, our good. Lauren Farham takes us to the Buzzard's Nest in Comanche. The Buzzard's Nest is right here on Highway 81 in Comanche, Oklahoma. There's lots of trinkets and treasures for you to check out. We 
we have about 14. Yeah, 5,000 square feet. They have everything you could possibly want. The buzzard's nest has been open for about a year and a half and owner Diane Gann says her store is chock full of unique and fun finds. We have the vintage items, we have painted furniture which is really hot right now. We have the new ups, upcycling of items where they, they go out to estate sales and find old chairs and make something else completely different out of them. We have some very talented vendors. We have vendors that care about what they have. The Buzzard's Nest is just one piece of the revitalization that's going on here in Comanche. There's lots of new restaurants and shops that are opening up in this town. We've been so lucky to have people like Diane, um, like Dennis and Dana, come to the area and start new businesses. Melinda Smith, the Comanche Area Chamber of Commerce president, says the town is making a big push to get new businesses in the area and also build back up the downtown area. We're working to hopefully get new sidewalks in town. We're working on building up our events um, and just building up local business, bringing new people in. The Buzzard's Nest is doing their part to bring more people to the town of Comanche too. We've had people here from Germany, Switzerland, Australia and Highway 81 is a good venue for people coming from Dallas-Fort Worth area going to Oklahoma City. I hope they feel like they're at home. I hope they feel welcome. So for a fun, friendly, small town atmosphere with big city selection, make sure to stop by the Buzzard's Nest on your next shopping trip. Each person is a new friend that comes in the door. Discovering Oklahoma, I'm Lauren Farum. The Buzzard's Nest is open 10 to 5 Monday through Saturday and closed on Sundays. You'll find them on South Rodeo Drive. That's also known as Highway 81 in Comanche. And coming up next on Discover Oklahoma. We have people in McAllister who've lived here for 50 and 60 years, driven by this building all this time and never come in. We're headed to my hometown to discover what some say is a hidden treasure. And one of the best places in our state to take your kids this winter. It is an awesome exhibit. It's partly interactive, uh, physically interactive, and then partially mentally interactive because it gives kids of all ages an opportunity to see what you can build with Legos. And incredible Mexican food that's worth the drive. Well, there's not anything we don't like on the menu. We're headed to Hector's a little bit later right here on Discover Oklahoma. Great travel tips anytime. Like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. As the weather cools and the leaves begin to fall, don't trade outdoor recreation for winter hibernation. Discover the off-season treasures available at Oklahoma's 34 great state parks. Wide open trails teeming with wildlife, fishing, fun festivals, bird watching, equestrian trails, nature center activities, and cozy cabins with fireplaces offer the perfect escape for a wintry getaway. Visit TravelOK.com for special offers and come see for yourself. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Oklahoma History Center this week. We're smack in the middle of the brand new Crossroads of Commerce exhibit, and it is, it's a doozy. It is fantastic, and it'll be here for quite a while, but you need to come here and check it out. In the meantime, if you are looking for something else fun for you to do with your family, especially on a cold winter's right, day, right, perfect. look no further than the Jasmine Moran Children's Museum in Seminole. It is a magical place that for 20 years now, more than that actually, it's been bringing out the kid in all of us. It's early, so the 42,000 square feet of fun at Seminole's Jasmine Moran Museum isn't open just yet, which means we get a quiet first peek at the Oklahoma Museum Network's traveling Art of the Brick exhibit, featuring the Lego sculptures of New York-based Nathan Suwaya. It is an awesome exhibit. It's partly interactive, uh, physically interactive, and then partially mentally interactive because it gives kids of all ages an opportunity to see what you can build with Legos. You know, there's a lot of design that goes into it. It's just not about building a little house or garage. 
as you will see, they, this artist has created wonderful sculptures with Legos that you would think, oh my word, how did he do that? So that sends a message to children, oh, well, let's try this or let's try that. So it's, it's a great experience for kids of all ages. And you know when the doors open here at the Jasmine Moran because you can hear those kids coming. Here they come. What does that mean to you? Oh, I just, as a classroom teacher, I'm telling you what, it is just, I love it. It's just music to my heart. Children charge through this museum, knowing every inch of it is for them to touch and experience, all designed to educate and inspire. It's all interactive, hands-on. Uh, a lot of the exhibits were initially developed for career education, thinking about if a child role plays being a doctor or a nurse or an artist, that that might be something they want to be when they grow up. So. I liken the museum to a garden in that we are planting seeds in the minds of children as to what they might want to be when they grow up. For example, our surgical suite, the kids can put on their scrubs and the mask and get in and through interactive play, they can simulate a heart transplant or a knee replacement. So when you get involved in that, then you get to thinking, oh, this feels good, I might want to do this. We had a, a young man come in and tell us that because of his experience in the courtroom, donning the judge's robe and banging that gavel and, you know, addressing the people in the juror's box, that that was the career path he chose. Dakota Patterson of Shawnee came here to the museum as a kid. I think my favorite part about this whole uh, museum is the grocery store. I think being able to ring up your own stuff and pick out your own groceries and junk food, I think I liked that, doing that one when I was younger. Today, she's here with her three-year-old daughter, Devin, on a field trip. So far, this will probably be her favorite. I'm sure we'll spend most of our time here. She loves Legos. She's learning and having fun, so all of that I love. And the folks at Jasmine Moran love that families can come here and build something that will last forever. For me, when people leave here, the experiences that they take away with them and the memories that they keep about those experiences that will keep them for many, many years, to me is what's special. The Art of the Brick exhibit will be at the Jasmine Moran through the end of March, and the museum's open 10 to 5 Tuesday through Saturday, 1 to 5 on Sunday. They're closed on Mondays and major holidays. And still ahead on Discover Oklahoma. The first thing I get when, when I take a tour from people out of town is they say, my goodness, how in the world did a building like this come in a city of 18,000 people? I'm headed back to McAllister for one of the most beautiful sights in my hometown. And family recipes that make from Mexican food like you've never tasted. This is the half pineapple, the half soap in the medio. I put in a steak and chicken, uh, veggies, hot sauce, cheese and top, and it's just really good. <laughs> we'll take you to the hot spot where no one minds the wait, coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. It's mind-boggling to go through the history of, of music and, and the connection to Oklahoma. Oklahoma's Rhythm and Roots website is shaking the walls with legendary talent, iconic venues, and vocals from the heartland. Full of photos, videos, music, trivia, and itineraries, Rhythm and Roots transforms Oklahoma's rich music legacy into a bucket list of travel opportunities. Tune in to OklahomaMusicTrail.com and start your journey today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're coming to you from the Oklahoma History Center in the new Crossroads of Commerce exhibit. Specifically, we're sitting here in the vintage Sonic car. Just order me a foot-long cheese coney and a Sonic no Blast. Onions. No, no we got to have onions. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll wait till after the show Thank with you. the onions. Uh, there is so much to soak in here and so much to learn about our great state, but you know, sometimes the greatest lessons are right under mm -hmm. our noses, and I found that out recently when I visited the Scottish Rite Temple and Museum in my hometown of McAllister. Dedicated in 1930, the Scottish Rite Temple in McAllister is quite simply one of the most beautiful buildings in southeastern Oklahoma. The first thing I get when, when I take a tour from people out of town is they say, my goodness, how in the world did a building like this 
come in a city of 18,000 people. It's there because an early builder wanted the Masonic Temple to be the largest building on the highest elevation in McAllister. But to tour the temple is fascinating and educational. When you walk in, you will see 18-foot ceilings and terrazzo floors and hard surface pillars and beautiful marble. There are conference and meeting rooms as well as a dining room. And then we have uh, our pride and joy, which is our clinic, our speech and language clinic, which we take children who need one-on-one -on -one therapy. The public schools have, have speech therapists in each district, but they have to do their work in a group session. And so many children need one-on-one. -on -one. That's when they refer them to us. And so that's our claim to fame. That's the Scottish Rite. Many people perceive the Scottish Rites Temple as being a secret organization. They are not. They do have some secrets that are involved with the various degrees. We have people in McAllister who've lived here for 50 and 60 years, driven by this building all this time, and never come in because they think, you know, this is something that is a secret and, and they don't want me in there. But we, we, we like to have people come in now and let, just let them know what's going on. And when you take a tour, one can't help but be astounded by how ornate certain areas are, like the auditorium. I usually use the auditorium as the, as the coup de grace, the, the end of the tour, because the, that's where you get the wow factor. But everything else in the building is a support for this stage and the auditorium, because uh, this is the reason why Scottish Rite uh, degrees are put on on a stage with costumes in pure theatrical form. It is a big wow factor indeed. Now, the reason that the auditorium is so unique or ornate is that when, when our candidates come in for a degree, for, the, for their degrees, we want them to recognize that they're not going into a municipal auditorium or just a, a, a civic center uh, setting. This is something special. And so consequently, all of the Egyptian decor that you see has nothing to do with the degrees that are on the stage. They are just window dressing, if you will, for the fact that we want this to be a uh, solemn and respectful place when they come in here. And it, it works. They recognize this is something different. On stage, you will find 110 backdrops. Some are full and some are side drops. The full drops are about 60 feet tall and 80 feet wide and all hand painted. And to the side is one of the largest pipe organs in the state of Oklahoma. We have 4,500 pipes in, in three chambers up above the stage level. And then we have the console down here. And uh, it's, it's a 51 rank which I, doesn't mean anything to me, but the people that know music, when I, when I bring them through, they say, oh, wow. So that, that's a huge factor. And everything they put in the temple, they've tried to make first class, everything. And uh, so uh, that's kind of what we have here, which is a, a unique situation, in, in particularly in our area of the state. We'd love to help you plan your next great road trip across Oklahoma, and we have a great new guide for you to do that with. Take a look at the 2016 Oklahoma Travel Guide. It's easy to get your copy. Just head to our website, travelok.com, and click on Request Free Brochure. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. This is really good, yeah. Incredible Mexican food that is worth the drive. We'll show you where to get it right here on Discover Oklahoma. As the weather cools and the leaves begin to fall, don't trade outdoor recreation for winter hibernation. Discover the off-season treasures available at Oklahoma's 34 great state parks. Wide open trails teeming with wildlife, fishing, fun festivals, bird watching, equestrian trails, nature center activities, and cozy cabins with fireplaces offer the perfect escape for a wintry getaway. Visit TravelOK.com for special offers and come see for yourself. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Oklahoma History Center's new Crossroads of Commerce exhibit. So many pioneers of economic development are featured in this exhibit. And of course, Oklahoma has been a wonderful place for small businesses to grow and thrive over the years. You know, that's exactly what Artina McGarry found in her hometown of Woodward was a little Mexican joint started by a guy named Hector who came there and he is living the dream. When he came to America 15 years ago, Hector Carvajal brought with him ambition, 
and his mom's recipes. And I had a dream for opening a, a family restaurant. It's known to Woodward locals simply as Hector's, but the sign out front says Hector y Amigos. Translation, Hector and Friends. We think the name is pretty perfect because to Hector, each customer truly is a friend. You're welcome, my friend. The menu is stacked with a lineup of all your Mexican food favorites, sizzling hot and packed with flavor. This is really good, yeah. Hector sets himself apart with signature entrees you just won't find anywhere else. This is, a, uh, you know, make a recipe, the different menus, I will restaurant. I have any special for, you know, my, my city and my mom recipes. I have any, maybe five, six really, really Mexican meals. Well, there's not anything we don't like on the menu. So it's kind of, when you get here, it takes you a while to figure out what you want because everything is good. And this is my favorite job perk. Hector has made up all of this food for us to try. Fajitas, burritos, nachos, taco salad. He's also made two of his signature dishes, and we're gonna try these. This is the half pineapple, the half sope in the medio. I put in a stay in chicken, uh, veggies, hot sauce, cheese and top, and it's just really good. The <laughs> mocajete, this is the rock. The big rock, you know the Indians, Mexican Indians, juice in Mexico is the old blender. Rock, I make it a fajita inside, hot sauce, uh, chicken beef, uh, veggies, cheese. This is really good. Hector is proud to be living the American dream right here in Oklahoma. Though English is his second language, truth is, some things are just universally understood. A friendly smile, and good food. In my hometown, Woodward, I'm Tina McGarry, Discovering Oklahoma. Hecker's is on Main Street in Woodward. They're open at 11 a.m. every day of the week. You can look over the menu on their Facebook page. A big thanks to the folks at the Oklahoma History Center for hosting us this week here in their brand new Crossroads of Commerce exhibit. A reminder, the exhibit we featured today is called The Crossroads of Commerce. It looks at all sorts of Oklahoma-grown success stories, brands like Brahms and Sonics, Oklahoma's connection to the entertainment industry, places like Kane's Ballroom, even our state's outstanding medical achievements. Everything from Nazi Zuti to Leon Russell, you'll find it here. Admission is $7 for adults with a discount for seniors and children. They're closed on Sundays and all state holidays. Coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, the beauty and history of homemade quilts see the Oklahoma Museum showing off its colors. And one of the best burgers in the state will show you how they're cooking things up in Tulsa and why you can't pass up this place. That's next week, right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Our intrepid Ford Explorer is provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.